Alright, today we're going to be building up the brand new 2024 Trick Madone SL6, the one that literally came out like three days ago. This is one of the first ones in New Zealand. Um, yeah, so we're going to build it up and have a first look at it. Generation 8 and it is very very nice in the flesh. All right It's been a while since I've done a bit of a build video, but this has obviously just come out I think it is Monday at the moment this bike came out on Friday just before the Tour de France So this is the SL6 model so it comes with uh, 105 Di2 which if you've seen my other videos in the past I think is one of probably the most underrated um, group sets on the market It is a phenomenally good group set for the money at the moment especially with the kind of the way the road bike industry is going with everything getting so expensive. 105 DO2 is a very, very good spec. That's why I got this for my store because I think this is a really good price point model. I think it's about seven and a half grand in New Zealand. So pretty nice bike for the money um, in this day and age. So yeah, we've got this in a medium large, so a 56 centimeter. We'll chuck it on the old scale to see what comes out the box and then we'll have a look at it a little bit more up close. Right, we want kgs, tear. Right, straight out the box we're looking at 8.41 kgs for a brand new carbon fibre disc brake road bike. Obviously that is on the heavier side, but when you get a brand new frame like this, a little bit of weight and stuff has to give for the price points. So obviously you've got a slightly heavier group set, but most of that weight will be in these wheels and tyre combo. If you were to grab this bike, and if I was to grab this bike, first thing you change, bar and stem, put some like wind space, some slightly um, lighter carbon fibre wheels on there at a budget. Right, and then a little bit of a nicer saddle, some carbon bottle cages and stuff, and you'll be able to get that weight under 8 kgs pretty easily. So obviously for those of you that know about the new Madone, it's basically meant to be as fast and as aero as the old Madone, which looked like this, and as light as the old Amondo, which looked like this. So it's meant to be, it's basically Trek's version of like the SL7 um, Specialized. It's meant to be the do-it-all speed, lightweight bike, because as you can see, after Mark Cavendish's first day in the tour, bike racing is getting so... Uh, much less dynamic, you know, everyone could pretty much win a stage, like Pogac is getting up there for bunch kicks, you know, Welts getting up the climbs and stuff. This is kind of Trek's answer to that, is that the do it all, do everything and do everything well bike, um, and it's pretty cool, but we'll have a look at a little bit of talking points on it, because there's some cool, cool stuff that I picked up just while I was building it. So first things first, obviously, it has the ISO flow, which I call the bum hole. Um, obviously the last Madone had this on the aero frame, but now they've brought it to their like lightweight climbing bike. It is a really weird looking design. Basically the bike diverts the wind from there, it kind of like pushes it through there and then out the back and over that rear wheel. Definitely become a bit of a talking point but it seems pretty cool on this as well. And then other than that all of the frame tubing is just a lot smaller than the old Madone. We built about three of the um, uh, the full Aero Madones at the shop in the last two weeks. And this has taken a lot of the uh, um, inspiration from that but it is a little bit different. Obviously you've still got the Aero seat post with the uh, kind of like the inverted way that they do it. And then that kind of flows nicely down to be able to give you the um, ability to actually do the whole, the ISO flow that they've got there, which is pretty cool. They've been able to bring that onto more of like a climbing lightweight bike. And then even on the SL6 model, they've really got the integration down pat. If you saw me put it on just before, they've got obviously the cables run right through here and they've got this little spacer that kind of like picks them up and then puts them right at the bottom of the stem, just so it looks really, really tidy. And it does get rid of the cables 
pretty well um, considering it doesn't have a fully integrated cockpit. But yeah, other than that, this model doesn't come with the aero bottles. Um, I would recommend putting the aero bottles on. Obviously, a big part of this frame is the aero bottles. That's obviously where they get some of their aerodynamic gains and stuff that they've been claiming. So if you were to buy this bike, I'd recommend putting the bottles that are designed to have on this bike on it. And now on the non-drive side of the bike, obviously you've got your disc rows and everything, but everything is so nice and flush that so you can tell that they've spent a lot of time working on the aerodynamics of this as well. There's a lot of little lines that you can't see in the photos, um, but yeah, this is a pretty nice version of it. I love it in this white. It's like a pearl glossy white, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's a bit of a look at the new Madone. I'm literally just got in store, so if you are around the Wellington area and you do want to come and look at one, Cycling Tom Bike Shop in Marston, this will be on display um, all week. We're also running three watch parties for the Tour de France. We've got one this week and then one next week, and then we're going to watch the last stage as well, which basically just means come in with some BYO drinks if you want to, and we've got pizza and coffee available at the coffee ride. And it's just like a chitter chatter and watch the stage from the night before for two hours after work and just kind of talk cycling and talk the Tour de France because it's such a cool week and no one really celebrates the Tour de France as it should be like in Europe and New Zealand so that's kind of what we're trying to do.